Yeah. These mice live about two weeks. Oh my gosh, because they're doing it on us. They are living their entire lives on your skin. They they hatch. They go through their larval status. Their larvae only have six legs as opposed to the eight of the adult. You know, they reach adulthood, the, the eight-legged form. And yes, they mate on you. They lay their eggs in your pores, which hatch and, and continue the cycle. I, wh- one thing that I kind of think is interesting is, you know, they, they are mites, so they are arachnids. So, oh, it's getting worse. (laughs) You are, in fact, infested with arachnids all the time. So, we've been trying to scare people saying, Oh, you're gonna swallow eight spiders in your lifetime. Meanwhile, I already have a million arachnids living. It's true. Yep. Wow, this was slander against the spiders. (laughs) Low key. The spiders were like, You hypocrite, you don't even know. You idiot. (laughs) Yeah, that's your cousin. Yeah, their cousin is the landlord of my body. Hi everyone, I'm Valerie. And I'm Ken. And welcome to The Facts and the Curious, where we talk about all the facts that I and some of you guys are curious about. Speaking of people who know fun facts about fun things, what are we talking about today? Well... Today, we are talking about a specific kind of animal Mm -hmm. that you termed... Flesh buddy. We're talking about flesh buddies. Yes. So we were talking about the mites that live in your eyelashes. Yes. And you came up with this brilliant term that they're your flesh buddies. Exactly. Because they're always with you. You're never alone. They're with you forever, like a good buddy. And so I decided to research flesh buddies. Ooh. So this, I I, I wanted to set some parameters for what exactly I wanted to dig into. Mm -hmm. And I really have two main things to narrow down, like into what constitutes a flesh buddy. Okay. So first of all, flesh buddies, like the eyelash mites, are commensal. With humans, there are three different kinds of relationships, terms for relationships, when two species live in the same space and right. how they interact with each other. Right. One interaction they can have is called parasitism, mm-hmm. where one species benefits from the interaction and the other one is harmed in some way yes. from the interaction. And we're not talking about parasitism like you know, tapeworms and stuff, because if if they're a parasite, if they're taking away from you, they're not, not a very good buddy. So I'm benefiting from having a mite? I'll get there. Okay, sorry, I'm jumping. A second relationship between two species that share the same space is called mutualism, where both species benefit from the interaction. Think about, like, sharks and cleaner fish. Yes. This is the classical example. Ooh, or um, is it those buffaloes that have those birds? Or is it hippos? They have the birds that like... Oh, it's hippos because they clean their teeth. And crocodiles. I don't think I know teeth. about these. No? Uh-uh. I feel like I'll have to Google it now. Like sort of like a cleaner fish? Yeah, huh. but it's little birds. I can't remember if it's... I feel like it's aquatic, so it must be between a hippo and a crocodile. But one of the two will have like their mouths just like... Ah, uh, just wide open, and the birds will come. And that's very fun. <laughs> that like that same ecological niche came up. Yeah. Twice. Yeah. Amazing. The world is such a beautiful place. It is. Now, eyelash mites are not mutualistic with oh, humans. Not. They are not. There are species that are mutualistic with humans. Um, there's there's a ton of bacteria that live on and in us that we could not survive without. Mm -hmm. Um, But since we're talking about mites, we'll be talking about the third kind of relationship, commensals, commensalism, where one species benefits from the interaction and the other neither benefits nor is harmed. Oh. That is what commensalism is. And that is what the mites are. Um, 
with a slight disclaimer that there are scientists who will tell you that there's no such thing as a commensal relationship okay. because species interactions are so complex that it's really unlikely that one species is really not going to be affected positively or negatively in any way interesting which is like probably technically true but also like come on man you know what we're talking about right <laughs> um so like in the studies that i'm going to cite in the comments a lot of them will talk about these mites being parasites even though they're not technically um though in certain situations they can be and i will talk about that and stipulation three is that if you research animals that are commensal with humans, scientists consider like cats and dogs to be commensal with humans. You know, we have cats and from their side of the relationship, they get food and shelter yes. and all kinds of stuff. And they're not exactly helping us pay no. the mortgage. They're making our lives a little more expensive actually. Yes. Wow. Almost parasitic, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there are a lot of species that are commensal with humans, like dandelions, for example. How? It's a flower. Well, human development creates the ideal uh, habitat for dandelions. You go outside, like in the forest, in the woods, you don't see a lot of dandelions. They're on the front lawn. Stop! I didn't know that. So, I'm, they're, they're not hurting us no matter what your local lawn guy will tell you they don't really help us either um, right so that is a species that is commensal with humans okay um but if they're not living on or in your body then they're not really a flesh buddy mm -hmm. so to bring that whole big long spiel to a close i am looking at commensal animals living on or in your body and so I looked around, I thought I'd find maybe like a nematode or something, but those all seem to be classified as parasites. The only animal that I could find that lives on or in you and is commensal with you are these eyelash mites. They're pretty special in that regard. So there's nothing else? Nothing else that I could find in my search. I'm I, a little disappointed. If someone else can find something... Let us know. I'm not a full-time researcher. Right. I have a regular person job. Um, oh, it's okay. <laughs> but today, that just means we're going to be talking all about the mites. So, there are actually two species of these mites that live on you. Oh. If you didn't know, you have mites that live on your face. They are microscopic. There are two different species of them. Um, they don't have like unique common names like there's not like the blue spotted mite and the you know elongated yellow bellied mite right. it, it, different those are great names to just come <laughs> thank up you I, I was thinking of birds i guess uh -oh. <laughs> um, but uh various sources will refer to them you know we we say eyelash mites you'll hear them um and in, in, in the sources i've listed they'll be called um, face mites sometimes they'll be called um, follicular mites follicle mites or human follicle mites interesting okay so their scientific names and uh, be patient with me and please don't excoriate me in the comments if I mess this up because it is Latin so I hope that I pronounce them correctly um, are demodex Folliculorum and Demodex brevis. Well, I don't think there's anyone who frequents YouTube who speaks Latin fluently. So. You never know. That's fair. Maybe we have a fan who's a Latin scholar and they are just blowing their top right now. Right. How <laughs> can you possibly think that those words were pronounced that way? Listen, that's fair, but they wouldn't be pre able to pronounce my first name. So it's fine. They... Um, are visually like you can tell the difference because one of them is twice as long as the other one i'm actually just going to show you pictures and then maybe you can put the pictures up so this is the smaller of the two okay. mites that live on your face this is brevis oh goodness 
<laughs> so they are have those legs. Those are short little stubby legs. Is that a tail? That is its abdomen. So its legs are in front of the ab abdomen. Yeah. So this side is its head. You can see its mouth parts right here. So its food has to travel past the legs. Yes. What a strange. Well, think about any insect or spider. They're kind of. Oh, they're you kind know of built fair. that way. Yeah. This is the one that might really upset you. The bigger one. Okay. That one's kind of cute. It's basically the exact same thing, but the abdomen is stretched. It I don't almost know. I has like, like a worm-like shape. What? You're surprising me. I thought. Wait, I... show me again. You see the? It's it's it often referred to as having sort of a worm-like body because it's so. I don't know. I think it's adorable. Fair enough. That's a flesh buddy I've ever seen. If one. you think that uh, these little guys are adorable, please let us know. So they are microscopic. The bigger one is about four tenths of a millimeter. Wow. And the smaller one is half that size. Oh, that's very tiny. The larger one, let me make sure I have this right. The larger one lives in your hair follicle. And the smaller one lives right next door in the sebum gland. Sebum oh. being like the oil that your skin naturally produces. So in your eyelashes, like by that line, one of them is by the follicle, one of them is by the sebum gland. One is in the follicle and one of them is in the sebum gland. Oh, they're inside. Yes. Oh. They are up in there. And it's funny that you call out eyelash specifically. Again, we've always kind of called them eyelash mites. But that is not the only place on your body where they live. Where else do they live? Well, um, most places on your face have, ah! have the mites. So we were watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine the other day. And in the show, they referred to them living in your eyebrows right. rather than your eyelids. They're actually kind of all over your forehead. This is Mouse, everyone. He's becoming a frequent guest. <laughs> it's our cat, Mouse. Go on. I, it's just a great name, I know. I came up with it. Um, they're on your cheeks. Not my cheeks. And they're on your cheeks. They're on your nose and especially... Like the, the sides of your nostrils here, the oh, wings of your nostril. The one that gets like all oily at mm -hmm. the end of the day. So they they eat the oil on in your in your in your they pores. They eat the oil. That's what they eat. Can I migrate them to this area? Well <laughs> <laughs> let me let me uh let me keep talking here and tell you about some other places you can find them. Oh, God. They really like this line right here. Oh, like you're smiling? Mm-hmm. The scientific name for that, I believe, is the nasolabial line i think okay <laughs> they live on your neck they live on your chest they have particularly high concentrations on the nipples <laughs> i don't know why that word makes i know why that word makes me laugh quick segue i have a friend who i'm not gonna name because i don't want to embarrass her she has this cute little toddler and the toddler was learning all the parts of the body, right? And so he came to me, he's like, Valerie, do you have legs? And I was like, yeah, I do. And he's like, do you have ears? And I'm like, yeah, I do. I'm making that up. I don't remember what he asked me. And then he goes, do you have nipples? And I've never had a two-year-old ask me if I have nipples before. And I just died laughing. And obviously the mom had to... Let them know, like, that's not really something we just ask people. That's private for them. So, you know what? My mites know all about my nipples, apparently. It's true. And speaking of private. Yeah. Oh, no. Mites have also been found on both male and female genitals. This is more of a... On the mons pubis and on the buttocks. And on the butt? Yes on the butt this flesh buddy knows me a little too well i don't know how i feel about this friendship not having boundaries now if i may there's one last place that i found oh, oh i did mention the ears They're, they've also been found on the on the outside of the ears but there's one last place that i found that they've been uh they, they've been found that i thought was fascinating and fascinating is a good word we're ready tell us you have 
on the inside of your cheeks. Wait, do you mean like here but inside? Yes. Oh, I thought you meant like, ah. Oh. No, inside your mouth. Huh? On the, on the inside of your cheek, you have a modified oil gland called a an ectopic sebum gland. And it doesn't have a hair follicle, but it has a sebum gland. And they have been found there as well. Inside my mouth. Yes. Yes. No, I don't like this flesh buddy anymore. <laughs> because what do you mean you're inside my mouth? <laughs> You've taken jurisdiction. It's funny because the sources where I found this are not like they're inside your mouth. They're naming like the scientific name for that tissue. Because they don't want to traumatize us. Obviously. And I had to Google it. I'm like, what is what is right. this? So basically, like, you, cannot, the inside of you your cannot escape these things. I just thought I lived my whole life thinking they were here because that's all you ever hear. It's like, oh, do you know that you have these little mites that live like on the hairs over here? Meanwhile, these mites have been knowing me intimately, biblically. I'm so glad you said that. It tra it's a great transition to what I want to say next. Okay. You're scaring me. So like you said, you can't you say you can't avoid them you can't get away right. from them um all every every single person will get these mites at some point in their lives mm. obviously you're not born with them they're not with you in utero right but uh most of the time we think these mites are passed on to you from your mother while you're nursing because they're on the nipple but not only will you get these mites during your life and at a fairly young age, like before you reach adulthood, these are kind of interesting because unlike other things that spread between people, what we would call spreading horizontally throughout the population, mm -hmm. these mites are spread vertically. You get them from your oh, family. Oh, so we're not sharing mites. We are not sharing mites. And in fact, there have been studies done about these mites genetics. And first of all, uh, they they took mites from people on all these different continents. Yeah. And their genetics were slightly different. They found one clade of mites in Africa and a different one in Asia and a different one in Latin America and a different one in Europe. And if you're an immigrant like an intercontinental immigrant, your, you will continue to pass down your mites for generations. So wait, if I have a child here in this country, my child will have my mites, but not your mites? Most likely. But not only that, your great-grandchildren, if they're still <gasps> here, will oh, wow. most likely have your African mites. They will carry on the power of my bloodline. Yes. On my behalf. And the way that oh, these mites genetics work, like we, we found the different the different genes in different places, it's actually been used as evidence to support the out of Africa theory of early human migration. Oh my gosh, through mites? These mites have been with us for so long. Like one question that scientists wondered was when did these mites evolve? Yay to colonize humans yes. and the answer is that these mites have been with us for as long as the homo sapiens species has existed Goodness. and probably longer these have been with us since we were like uh like pre pre sapiens humans like hominids there's a real argument that no species evolved closer with humankind than these follicle mites so they've been knowing us they've been knowing us Goodness. for as long as we've existed yeah this is a hard pill to swallow i'm not even gonna lie and also don't just throw the way the word colonization in front of me it's it's a trigger word okay they're flesh buddies you can just say that um but that was a joke, by the way. It probably <laughs> sounded serious. <laughs> but I'm just trying to think, like, you know, sometimes I just have questions for God, and I'm like, but what was the reason? 
you know? Yeah, and, um, you know, we found that there are these different might clades in different places in the world. Yes. And there are theories that they might be subtly physically different to the point where each sort of genetic grouping of mites is better adapted for different types of skin. What? Like, like the African mites might just be better, like because because they've been on that continent for so long, they that they've kind of adapted themselves to specifically live on black skin, and the European mites have specifically adapted themselves to live Wait, on white skin. What does that mean if they're on the inside of the glands and on the inside of the like follicle? You know, I I didn't really get that far. Obviously, right. our our skin has a lot of differences. For for example, my skin is a lot oilier than, right. than than your skin is. Yeah. And so my mites just might be better adapted to oh, those conditions. Fair enough. Like if we traded like and, your mites wouldn't really spread to me and mine wouldn't and would be hair, unlikely to spread to you. I don't know much about like dermatology, so I don't even know if this is factually correct. But like, you know, I think I read somewhere that like your follicle shape is different and that's why your hair comes out curly. Yeah. That and could so be. that could be like another reason. Yeah. Now, these mites are... Th those two species of mites that live on humans only live on humans. Okay. There are other mites in that genus that live on other ma mammals. And oh, okay. it, if, if a, when, when a mite like is adapted to live on that mammal, it really only lives on that mammal. And the mammals that carry these will also usually have multiple species like we do. So there are okay. cat mites, and there are dog mites. And um, I found there these demodex mites can live on pigs and sheep and deer and mice and rats and even like seals and sea lions. There are different species Crazy. of these mites adapted to all those different species. One thing I found interesting is that, you know, you might be wondering... All of us, including you, dear listener, have these mites on your body right now. And you've never noticed it. They're... I'm feeling itchy right now just talking about it. <laughs> they're, commensal. they're commensals, right? So they don't have an adverse effect. That's not true of basically every other mammal species that I was reading about huh? that has these mites. These mites really commonly cause um, uh, mange in animal species oh and in some species like dogs it can be really dangerous and even right. deadly but for whatever reason with us most of the time we don't suffer any adverse effects do you think that's why my eyelashes fall out i don't think that's why your eyelashes because, fall out let me just explain you know how sometimes you lose an eyelash once in a while and you're like oh make a wish I lose, like, if my eye will get itchy, and I'll just rub it like this, and I'll look at my finger, and there's five eyelashes. Every, like, day, maybe. Sometimes multiple times a day. And I don't know how I still have the three eyelashes I have still <laughs> today, but you think I just have weak follicles? I think that's just a you thing. Now, I've kind of alluded to the fact... Way to victim as you, also. As you, um... As you accuse your flesh buddies of, of a heinous crime for which they are certainly innocent. They can't defend themselves. They can't defend themselves. They're your buddies. I don't know what you're thinking. Um, They're the ones that are all up in my mouth. I don't want them there. <laughs> there are... I, I've kind of alluded to the fact now that... They're not always your buddies. That there are certain... Yes. Uh, cases where they sort of cross the line mm -hmm. into being parasites. Generally, this happens in immunocompromised people. Oh. It can also happen if uh, you just have kind of poor hygiene and don't wash your face very well. Mm. So if you have an overpopulation of these mites, which is what happens in, in those circumstances... They can cause a few different skin diseases. They've been linked to dermatitis. They've been linked to uh, blepharitis, which is like a swelling of the eyelids. 
they're they can the eyelids are one of the places where they can take over fastest because it, think about when you're washing your face like you wash your forehead and you wash your nose and you wash your cheeks most people don't spend as much time scrubbing Whoa, their eyelids wait a minute let me tell you this thing i'm not marrying africans <laughs> this cross-cultural marriage situation because i'm zimbabwean if you're zimbabwean you know this when they teach you to what i've told you this that like washing your face is a big deal in like zimbabwean culture that every morning you like wake up and the first thing you do before you see anybody else is wash your face i was taught that when i'm washing my face i should scrub the heck out of my eyes really and they'll say if it burns it burns wash it out wow. with water but i'm telling you zimbabweans and it burns and then they're like okay you rinse with water real quick and that's yeah, it. that did not make it at least to my family right yeah 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 zimbabweans will wash our eyelids so maybe this my thing actually is for you guys <laughs> that's why they said oh it's different on different skins because they saw in africans we didn't have them and they were like we need to find a reason to not make ourselves look dirty you know what i mean but you do have them okay it's true sure they are perhaps Wait, oh we my have gosh. another introduction in the house this is the matriarch the beginning the one who started it all the mama of mouse miss meow 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 Hello. everybody say hi meow meow. hi meow 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 okay she loves attention she does it's true but let's go on um a couple other uh diseases that overpopulations of these mites have been linked to they are possibly linked to acne I found I found some studies that say yeah probably and some that said eh probably not. Kind of up in the air. Right. The really big one. Wait, before you say that, Mouse is a mama's boy and Meow Meow hates him. So usually he'll come try to disturb and then Meow Meow will run away. But I guess he's not doing that now, so it's a little anticlimactic. But keep your eyes peeled. You know he always behaves well when we have guests. That's true. Yeah. So thanks for sticking around. Oh, oh, really? Oh boy. Oh, and she see, <laughs> she hates him. <sighs> anyway, go ahead. The really big uh, disease link with these mites is rosacea. Oh, uh, remind me what rosacea is again. It's, it's like a redness. It's like a redness of of the skin, usually the cheeks and the nose. Um, Interesting. I didn't realize that was a disease. It it is a skin disease. Oh. And almost every rosacea patient has an overpopulation of these mites. And you said it's immunocompromised people and people with poor hygiene? Generally, okay. yeah. Not to, like, call anyone out who of might course. have yeah, a please. mite problem. Yeah. That's th Those are the two circumstances so that I saw coming up. It would probably, probably be harder to detect in people of darker skin. The... Like if oh, you got rosacea or something like that. You know, I so I don't know how rosacea works with dark-skinned people, to be right. honest with you. They're, they have tests for these mites. Okay. It involves um, basically putting, either swabbing your skin or putting something sticky like a piece of tape on your skin oh. to try to lift them off. Although, I was reading a study, actually, where they were doing these mite tests and they were finding mites, but only on maybe 20% of people. And so that was what they concluded, was that maybe 20% of people have these mites. But then they started testing for mite DNA. Yeah. And everyone had it. Oh. And obviously, the only reason why the DNA would be present on you is if the mites are there. So the conclusion was maybe their mite harvesting techniques were wanting but that every person actually does have these mites crazy before you go on with like illnesses and things i had a question but we kind of jumped ahead sure sure you mentioned that we have mites on our nip nips yes and i propose that maybe that's how babies get them from suckling yes is that true yes okay that is that is <laughs> i thought maybe from like you know, natural birth or something. The percentage of people who have the mites increases as you age and until, you know, you're reaching adulthood and, and pretty much everyone has them. Scientists believe that 
some babies get them from birth, that a great number of babies receive them during nursing, and that even if you don't, you will have enough close family contact during your young childhood that that is probably how you will get them. It's possible to have them spread horizontally through the population if you give your baby a, to a stranger to kiss then may, maybe they get okay. their mites that way but it's almost never how it happens so my follow-up question was on the horizontal spreading yes. because like then can you not get mites that are sexually transmitted because you know there's a lot of skin to skin i didn't read about anything like that okay i suppose it's possible right but it seems um it, it, it just didn't come up generally by the time that you're old enough to be having that kind of contact you've already got mites oh so, so even the detection you, of the spread would be like yeah difficult yeah you'd, you'd have to be like doing really detailed genetic testing of the mites and i see okay all right that's what i wanted to know yeah carry on sure uh i've i've kind of actually finished the whole, the oh. whole disease portion okay um I, I i can talk about you know their life cycle yeah these mites live about two weeks oh my gosh because they're doing it on us they are living their entire lives on your skin they they hatch they go through their larval status their larva only have six legs as opposed to the eight of the adult you know they reach adulthood the the eight-legged form and yes they mate on you they lay their eggs in your pores which hatch and and continue the cycle i wh one thing that i kind of think is interesting is you know they they are mites so they are arachnids so oh it's getting <laughs> worse Okay. You are, in fact, infested with arachnids all the time. So, we've been trying to scare people saying, oh, you're going to swallow eight spiders in your lifetime. Meanwhile, I already have a million arachnids living it's on me. It's true. Yep. Wow, this was slander against the spiders. <laughs> Low key. The spiders were like, you hypocrite, you don't even know. You idiot. Yeah, that's your cousin. Ha! Yeah, their cousin is the landlord of my body. And, you know, I showed you those pictures and they have stubby little legs. But they're not completely sessile. They're not completely... They don't necessarily live in just one whore. <laughs> they do... Oh, they have legs. They have they to have, move, don't they? They do. No, so no. it's usually at night that they come out. They've been You're documented. Stressing me. They've been I'm documented so... moving at day, but usually it's night. And oh, when they're ready, so... they'll they can leave the pore and they'll crawl across your skin and find an yeah. empty pore, oh, a nice cool. new home, and they'll move in. Just they. No, you're not gonna continue. Let us digest what you just said. So you're saying they're aware enough to be like, oh, it's dark. Huh? Mites after dark. And then they go yep, looking out, for... Yep, the flesh buddy is asleep. It's time to... It's time to go find a new it's apartment. like Toy Story. It has a timer for me. <laughs> That's audacious. To be like, she's sleeping, guys, let's go. You know, man, you run, let's go. Find a new pole, get some real estate. The housing crisis is real. <laughs> <laughs> You know, get some property, get some generational wealth <laughs> for great great grandchildren. Yeah, you know, location, we'll location, us. location. Oh, you know, wow. the the rich mites live on the tip of your nose. Wow, we 2008 <laughs> hit all of us. Hey, the recession is out. You're telling me mites are migrating. Yeah. Huh. And they're waiting until dark. And they're waiting until dark. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. They move between 12 and 16 millimeters an hour <laughs> i thought you were gonna say a day at least or a week because you said this thing it's a small small thing cut small thing like this not even like this 
Because you said it's a quarter of... No, no, no. Four tenths of a millimeter. Is that what you said? The, the big ones are four tenths and the yes, small ones are two, two tenths. tenths. So a fifth of a millimeter is a small one. Mm-hmm. And you said how much does it travel per... 12 to 16 millimeters per hour. Okay, for those of you that use the American wrong units, um, a centimeter is 10 millimeters. A centimeter is about this much. Half an inch is about like a, a centimeter and a quarter, roundabout, I think. And so yes. you're saying they move about half an inch. Uh, yeah. Every hour. Every hour. So in this time that we've been doing this podcast, they've made it half their, their, their at least here. The one that was here is not here. Yes. And they're timing. They're watching the sun going soon. Soon. They said, I heard the inside of the cheek is nice. It's soft. Mm-hmm. Mm. She gained a little weight. So mm, extra oils for us to, to eat. Well, you know, those, uh, those uncolonized pores and their juicy, juicy sebum. I knew nothing would come, like nothing good would come from this podcast. As soon as you said the word colonize, I knew we were just going downhill from there. Downhill. Why did I ask about this? This is on me. Ignorance is bliss, guys. So obviously it's too late because you're watching this. But like if you can avoid it, actually don't. We need the views. But, you know, don't tell anybody what it's about. Let them just discover it for themselves. Because, wow, well, apparently things are just crawling on us, guys. If you didn't know, it's not just the eyebrows. Things are just crawling. And there's no way to escape. You know, you get those people that are like, I'll just shave my head. It's inside the pores. Yeah, so if you have the mite overpopulation, for example, some like the treatment for that involves depopulation of the mites there there are different like tea tree oil is something that i that i saw come up okay. a couple times there, there's things that you can treat your skin with but you have to do it continuously because you know that might kill off the adults but you still Does have eggs is. in your skin <sighs> wow we... and so if you only do it once they'll come back i really need to get to heaven and be like god what was the agenda that day that you decided, and now I will create mites. What exactly had happened in your life at that time period? Well, you know, there is some good news that he might share with you. Okay. I One of the first things I said was that some scientists will tell you that there's no such thing as a commensal relationship. Right. That everything is, even if a very small amount, either parasitic or mutualistic. Yes. There are possibly some mutualistic interactions. There better be. Some scientists think that these mites, as they're eating your skin oil and the, the nearby cells of, of, of your skin, <laughs> that they might also consume some of the bacteria in your pores. Exfoliation from the inside. A little, out. a little, a little, little cleaning a little crew. Cleanse, a little spa yes. treatment for the girls. Yes. Okay, I'm listening. That's it. That's all I. Have. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you know they could help keep the girl a little, little young. You know. Yeah, you know, and I didn't specifically read anything about the mites consuming your oil and therefore keeping your skin less oily. Oh. But it kind of makes sense that, you know, if we're talking about them eating bacteria, then we can talk right. about we can talk about that too. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> I don't know if it makes up for all the destruction they bring into my life, but you know what? I respect. At least they're quiet about it. You know what mites are? Mites are European politicians. Because all politicians are corrupt. But yes. at least the European ones. They'll be like, okay, I won't really interfere with your personal life that much. You know what I mean? I might do a little embezzlement here. Yeah. little insider trading here. Yeah. You know, a little corruption. A little... But you know what you're going to get? Healthcare. You know? <laughs> so you're still going to get housing. You know, you will get roads without potholes. Good schools. Stuff like that. Whereas where I'm from, I love my country. Let me tell you one thing. 
None of you will ever tell me anything about Zimbabwe. You like to tease Zimbabweans all the time, but it's fine. Me, I love being Zimbabwean, okay? But Shem, Africa as a continent, it's a little rough in regards to their governance. <laughs> it's just a little, you know, it builds character. Let me put it that way. It builds, it builds character, makes you creative with how you need to live your life because not everything you need is so easily accessible all the time. Okay, and that's a blanket statement. That's not to say that everywhere everyone is like that. But just in general, the governments are governmenting there a little bit. And so mites, they're like, we'll take what we need to take, like all these other parasites, but we'll keep quiet, you know? We'll move in the dark. We'll wait for you to sleep before we invade. You know what I mean? It's not like a, a tapeworm or something where you're literally losing weight and or a tick where you get you might get the Lyme disease in the process because they're not parasites I mean you said that but you also said that some people might argue and be like they are parasites you know what I mean but they're so, wrong but they're not but they're living off of my oil but they're not harming you you've never oh you said that never... parasite needs to harm you in order yeah to you've never had a mite related problem no I haven't you could you talk about the destruction that they cause in your life but if you didn't know that you had mites you wouldn't know any better that's fair that's fair so yeah you know what mites i'd vote for you again i would so after learning all of that how are you feeling about your flesh buddies are you still buddies um we might need therapy just to discuss boundaries uh like any good buddy you know but i feel like if like you said what they're doing is harmless then who am I to tell them how to live their lives? I will just try to forget everything I've learned about them. And like any good relationship, sweep all the disturbing stuff under the rug and just enjoy it, man. You know what I mean? Just enjoy It's like, okay, you do things a little quirky, a little weird, a little zany. That's okay. That's all right. It's a good little relationship. I will say that after doing this research, every time I like rub my eye or scratch my face i feel bad because i'm like oh i just plucked some of my flesh buddies out of my skin and they're not gonna survive now probably no if i feel bad i feel bad you just told me that they're out here just like laying eggs and stuff in me so they're your like, buddies yeah um, yeah i don't feel bad i don't i'm gonna tell you right now I don't, I don't feel bad uh the the thick one is cute i like the thick one the juicy one it looks like if you like squeezed it gently it would make a sound you know <laughs> what sound are you are you envisioning like, <laughs> <laughs> like that um the small one to me i don't know but it looks like it has a hard exterior i know it probably doesn't but i imagine well they're they're mites so they're arachnids so they're arthropods so they have an exoskeleton <sighs> you see problem after problem but anyway so that one doesn't look as fun to squeeze you know what I mean? It looks like if you squeezed it, it might, like, hurt you back a little bit. Um, and, yeah, I don't know how I feel about the, the little one. And it just also looks grosser. I think it might have been the picture you chose. Because the other one had, like, 3D, so I could see, like, his body. True. So, pretty privilege exists, I guess. But, yeah, you know what? I learned a lot today. I learned that spiders are not my only enemy. Um, that the small mites are coming for me, too. But they're not hurting me, so... I guess it'll be a flesh frenemy situation from now on. How's that? I, you know, you you have to define your own relationship with your buddies. How do you feel about your flesh buddies? I, well, like like I said, I I only want the best for them. I am sort of deterred from from touching my face because I don't want to interrupt their fragile little lives. I kind of want to design something with flesh buddies on it though. Now, yeah. I'm a graphic designer. I feel like I should. You should make flesh buddy plushes. Oh, that sounds expensive. <laughs> I don't know where to get those, but that would be really cute. Because then, you know what? At nighttime, when you cuddle with your flesh buddy, then they can come out and see and be like, oh my gosh, guys, it's a mascot. <laughs> Just give them something to be happy about. That'd be cute. Yeah. Maybe I'll make a little t-shirt or something. Yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe y'all can buy a little flesh buddy tee. But just to remind you and everyone else around you that we're never alone. Never. Never. Ever. Ever. You have 
so many friends with you. <laughs> and isn't that what we want? You got a friend in me. <laughs> That's all I'll sing for copyright reasons. And, you know, I'll, I guess I'll just close. I, I, I really do think it is fascinating to think about how, you know, these, these mites, more than any other species on Earth, are mm -hmm. adapted and evolved to be with us that uh, at, at least as far as animals go I, I suppose there's always you know the bacteria that we share our body with but as as far as animals go like they are our evolutionary buddies they they are through thick and thin yeah they're so unique among animals and in, in their relationship with us so I just think that's really cool Oh, well, thanks for educating all of us. Sure. And traumatizing us in the same breath. Any time. It's kind Appreciate of my specialty. You. Yeah. And yeah, feel free to join us in a couple of weeks to see what we'll be talking about next. Thank yeah. you for going on this journey with us. Please like, share, subscribe. Uh, we're on every podcast streaming thing. I don't know what they're called, but every podcast platform, we're there. We're on social media at The Facts and the Curious on Instagram. Facts and the Curious on TikTok. Um, you're already here on YouTube. But yeah, follow us and we're going to post a lot more of these. Yeah, if you have any questions about your flush buddies, let us know. If you have any suggestions for future episodes, mm -hmm. let us know. Yeah, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.